nap after lunch. So I will not disturb you much. I will speak very slowly and uh, on my presentation. And it's not really very much interesting. Is who, what, when, how much for motorways of the sea. I know that how much you don't like, so I leave it for the end. But let's, I'm just guiding to who are we, uh, what do we do, when there will be an opportunity, and of course, then we have to discuss this thing of money. Um, final, oh yes, he was right. God's sake. Okay, I got the point. We'll pay you for the uh, for this thing. You can include it in the electrical costs, but we need a new one. Okay, so is this important, motorways of the sea? So first of all, what is it? Please, after this, don't ask me again, what is it? So motorways of the sea is nothing more and nothing less than a financial framework to support maritime transport development. So anything that is maritime transport is there. You want to have ports, you got it. You want to have shipping, you got it. You prefer short sea shipping, you got it. You prefer deep sea, you get it. You want uh, bulk, you have it. Liquid, solid, whatever. Everything that sails at sea, it's covered by motorways of the sea, of course, following certain rules. But we are not at all uh, like uh, there was a Marco Polo program looking into the same thing and looking into some restricted sort of shipping activities. Our remit is we are 28 member states. Well, it's impressive, but we could very, be very small, but we are 500 million people. And these 500 million people for this internal market, 40% of the trade generated by 500 million people, which is slightly larger than what Greece has as a population, is done by shipping, 40%. And 75% of the entire export-import of the European Union is also done by shipping. So this entails that Europe needs to behave as a maritime power. We need to have ports. We, ne we need to have a strong shipping cluster. We need to accommodate our import and exports. What is next? Well, if you look a little bit, be, well, besides trade and that's trade, you have the cohesion part of it, which is relatively important, especially for almost an archipelago state like Greece. Of course, the major part of Greece is, lies in the mainland, but you have a very important geostrategic part of it, which is an archipelago. So you need to guarantee connections to that, and you need to have shipping for that. The, uh, what is the next is that you're sitting in the middle of a market of 450 million persons, if you take in the north of Africa and the Middle East. So these people also, and of course, the part of Europe, the southern Europe, uh, that is also a great creator of trade needs. So again, we are having shipping. And if we go, no, not if, when we will have the TTIP, because we'll have it, hopefully the way we want to have it, and not the way the Americans want to have it, but we will end up with that will be a community, very rich community in worldwide terms, of 900 million persons. And the objective of this TTIP treaty is to trade. And that trade, as I said before, it is not going to be done by railways. I'm very sorry. If you are planning to invest on railways, don't. Invest first in shipping, and then, of course, in the ports and in the connection to the winterland, because what we want to do is to create a competitive, integrated transport chain. From a small village called Ambrosius, west of Phoenix, 50 miles west of Phoenix, to a very small town east of Athens, 60 kilometers east of Athens. That is what we want to achieve. Connection between the interlands, between the origin and production points, using shipping as the main drive. OK, so that's what we are doing, connecting interlands to interlands. The way we do it is we have an Article 21. For those of you who are lawyers, this is my revenge. This is the legal basis for motors of the sea. This is the TNT regulation. If you ever have doubts on what the TNT is or what we can do with that, go there, please read it. It's a fabulous text, very good. And it will tell you everything that we can do there. That's another part of the Article 22. So you see that we need to, to have at least two member states, connect the core network to or more core network, ports of comprehensive network. We'll come to that. 
Why the benefits? Why is it important? Why the benefits? Because when you are building a refueling barge, or when you are installing refueling possibilities in ports for LNG, you are coming into the wider benefits. Okay, and then this is the reason why I was giving you this. It's because I am preparing one report that is called the detailed implementation plan that will be presented to the European Parliament this uh, summer, so in June this year, and this will have the strategic development lines for motorways of the sea until 2020, I would say with a view to 2030, uh, but at least it will guide you through the, the, the next four to five years. You know that the duration of eternity in the Commission is about three weeks and a half, so you cannot promise much, but in principle all the strategic lines will be there. And I'm very much counting on you as stakeholders, industrial stakeholders, on you as a conference, as the result, to feed this process and have your interests, your points of importance, your priorities fed into the detailed implementation plan. Because then, if we have it approved by the European Parliament, then the eternity is four, four weeks instead of two years, weeks and a half. No, but seriously, it will be an important strategic document and if you want to get support from your own governments, it's important to be there. Uh, that's another Article 23, and this is the thing. So, Mr. Logotetis spoke to you about this. So, this is the quintessence of transportation development. This is, we have a comprehensive network for 2050, okay? So that's how Europe will look like with the main transport axis in 2050. We have, that's the comprehensive network. We have another priority, which is which part of it we can achieve and we should achieve by 2030. So that's the core network. It's a subset of the comprehensive network. And when it comes to the financial regulation, which is this one between 2014 and 2020, and that we have given a fancy name, CEF, Connecting Euro Facility, so it is not more, not less than the name of the financial regulation, that one we have selected to take out a subset of the, the subset, which is the core network corridors, and those other ones. Nine corridors. So this is it. If you are not in, you are out, which is a la police true, but it is serious if you are not in. Now, if you look at that, there are a lot of points of solution of continuity. It's true. But the big advantage is that for the first time, and due a little bit to motorways of the sea, there is not one single corridor that does not start or end or start and end in a port. So for the first time, the connection to maritime transportation to export and import is done, it's established, it's there. Okay? The other thing is that, yes, okay, but there are a lot of points which are not connected here, there, elsewhere. That's exactly the reason for motorways of the sea. So what, it's, what is connecting them all is the sea. It's the motorways of the sea. That's what makes, it, what makes the solution of, of continuity disappear. And that's exactly what connects Europe. So the sea is there, and that is also the reason why you don't have a single line identifying a motorways of the sea. Because if I draw a line, I exclude all the rest. So bear with me. Let's follow the, this peripatetic uh, way with Plato, and let's be able to rationalize or to imagine or to, to, be, uh, to create this big Im image of a motorways of the sea network that, even if it is not represented there, it's conceptually there. Okay? So we don't need to have a line there to know that it will be there. So that's motorways of the sea, and that is worth 1 billion euros, okay? Now, the method for MOS is guarantee single links directly with each core network corridor, so we did each, each one of them, so all of this is eligible uh, to ensure the creation of a network, and it will be the maritime corridor that I mentioned to all the corridors, and we will be participating with our consultant, uh, with the coordinator for Motors of the Sea, in each and every one of the corridor forums to discuss and tell them what are the needs of the maritime industry, be it in terms of port development, port interland connections, 
ship port interface, or even ship operations development and in terms of wider benefits. We need to, well, we need to take into account the environment, the, of course, the greenhouse effect. Uh, we need to take into account the black waters. We need to take into account the ballast water. Uh, we need to take into account the reduction of air emissions. And for the first time, we have an, an instrument to allow us to do that, and that is motorways of the sea. So that's what we are trying to do. I want just to what I said. Okay, we cover everything, even rope access. Okay. Now, the models operandi is going to be this one. Uh, we finance ships. We finance ship to port operations. We finance port, although the corridors will also be able to finance some port developments. We finance ports to immediate interlands. For instance, we have financed in, in Sweden viaducts or tunnels exactly to bypass the urban uh, rings, the urban tissues, connect the, the port to the immediate uh, uh, TNT network in terms of rail or road. And of course, then the interland development that will be the corridor development. Our, our objective is to make this development consistent. We will identify, hopefully on your behalf, after discussing with you, what are the needs for development between the port and the interland that should be pursued? And hopefully, it will be more the users of the service than the railways of each one of the countries that will define what will be the next developments. So the idea is that it will not be the railways company to, to say, we are going to do this. But probably for the first time, they have to take into account the needs of the customers who are the shippers and the shipping companies and the ports. So that's what we are trying to do, is to make a development consistent and making it happen. But we can only do it if we have the support of the industry, of course. Now, this is how to synchronize. I just told you the objective is to coordinate funding. Uh, our priorities are three. Environment, that's where LNG is coming to. Uh, integration of maritime transport into logistics chain. So we would very much like to connect Cyprus with Piraeus, or so Limassol with Piraeus, and then penetrate over the Balkans to, up to the Baltic. This is something that we can do. And we can do it in terms of logistic information systems, because as you all know, if you want a container physically to move, it, the image of that container needs also to move. Okay. If, the, if the container, the physical container, is not reconciled with its image in the logistic information system, the container will not move. So that's what we are trying to do, and we count on you to help us doing this. And of course, a third element, a third pillar, it's maritime traffic, uh, maritime safety, traffic management, and human element training, which is a supportive thing. But without safety, maritime traffic, I mean, shipping will not exist. So that is also something that we are doing. Uh, I will not brag about this, but since 2008, we have developed 76 motors of the sea, of the sea projects, about 2.3 billion of investment, 651 million grants. We are not giving subsidies. You give subsidies to tomato producers. Okay? We are not giving subsidies. We are giving subventions, grants for development to a specific project that deserves to be supported because it is important in terms of development. So please forget about the word subsidies unless you want to get in trouble with state aid and competition rules. And we are not giving subsidies because we are not giving money to everybody to do the same thing. That's what a subsidy is. We are selecting specific projects which deserve it to get the special support. Uh, this is why the benefit, okay, just all of them, as you see, they plot against nicely against the nine transportation corridors. This is intermodal connection projects, even some like Adria Moss in, uh, in, uh, in the Adriatic. And of course, this is, for instance, the, the links in the north, you see they are much more uh, developed at year. Uh, exception made, for instance, for this Adria Moss that was uh, linking Venice and Igomenitsa. Uh, why the benefit? 
uh, we have a number of projects. We are supporting vessels for LNG, retrofitting or new building, methanol, and abatement measures such as uh, scrubbers. We do not finance open loop scrubbers so that it is clear. We have never financed it. We have no position on that. We do not say that it's good or bad, that it is allowed or forbidden. We just don't finance it. That's all. So if a ship owner wants to finance it himself, great. But we don't finance because we do not know enough. So when the ship owners will know enough, then maybe we will finance it. But until such a moment as, uh, as somebody knows something, we won't, we won't put public money at risk on that. But we are ready to finance in this new call. If a ship owner has invested in an open loop scrubber and is fearing a little bit all these problems, we are ready to support him, to give him a, a grant to upgrade his system from open loop to closed loop. Okay, so we are generous. OK, this is uh, just a, an idea that you can have on uh, what we use to support in different places related to the environment. It is not small, and that is dedicated exclusively to scrubbers, which, of course, will not affect you directly. So again, the 10T uh, core network corridors, that's where you will make, those are lifelines for transport uh, that are important as guides to your business. Uh, this is the co-financing, but just before this, just don't forget that we have to, what we have tried to do is to show this very map to the Middle East, to the Black Sea, and to the, to the, Ma, uh, to the Maghreb and the Mashrek and tell them, okay, this is what we are going to do. Please try and develop the mirror image of this in your countries. And that's exactly what we are trying to do to create or reinforce this possible market of 400 million, 50 million people. And for the time, for instance, we have a small project that is uh, uh, gathering together a number, a number of friendly countries. So we have, it's called um, Fresh Food Corridor, and it's about a uh, efficient logistic connection between certain neighboring countries and Europe uh, carrying fresh food. And so we have Egypt, Jordania, Palestine, and Israel together uh, exporting to copper, Venice, and Marseille. And the whole idea is exactly to, to, to be able to have a uh, efficient connection um, with uh, cooperation of the customs, the phytosanitary, and the veterinary uh, elements, and guaranteeing that if the goods are coming from Palestine, it's from Palestine, Palestine. So there is a certificate of origin. And they came in from Israel, it's Israel, Israel, and Jordania and the rest. So we started it. It was the first pro program ever that has done this. And as we have established also connections with um, Panama and with the United States. So the idea is to disseminate the, uh, what are the user requirements that we have in Europe in terms of logistic information systems and favor the development in those countries or the use by those countries or those ports of systems which are European friendly. Okay, for a ship owner it's important because the way you will deal with bureaucracy in Europe will be the same you will deal in the north of Africa or in the United States or in the Panama Canal. This is what we finance and I think that being in Greece and Sorry, much to the regret of the great city, the great Republic of Venice, you cannot get your hands on 85% of funds. <laughs> if you have 30%, that's good enough. But you can get up to 85% of funds if your government supports it. OK, any more information on this in your website? Nine core network corridors for the 10T. The call is there, so we put our money where our mouth is. So the call has opened two weeks ago on a Friday. It will close on the 16th of February. We have 280 million of euros available for grants for motors of the sea, of which 150 million of euros are for cohesion countries. And again, I look at you because it's an opportunity not to lose. Okay, so I hope that I can uh, 
be appealing with these 280 million euros. I cannot give you more, sorry, May, only next year. But, and that you use it properly. And uh, believe me, we are making now a difference in the, the shipping world is making a difference. So let's, let's continue with it. And thank you very much for your support. And now we go for the next speaker, isn't it? Mr. Zakaryudaki, yes, this is not a Woodstock actor. <laughs>